Welcome to On Air with Kate Butler, where we are revealing life's best kept secrets. Welcome to On Air with Kate Butler, where we are revealing life's best kept secrets. Today, I have a guest that is going to knock your socks off. I have a sneaky suspicion. For over three decades, Catherine Crockett Witt has dedicated her life to transformative communication. Kate's unique approach to her work has yielded transfer transformative results, leaving an un deniable mark on the lives of those she touches. Through her engaging and insightful presentations, workshops, and one-on-one sessions, she has empowered audiences and clients to unlock their potential, break through barriers, and embrace personal growth. Kate is the catalyst for positive change, a guide on the journey of self-discovery, and a beacon of hope for all those who seek transformation. Kate, welcome. How are you today? Here we go. I'm good. I'm really good. And um, I love that word beacon of transformation, eh? Ooh, nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. That beacon of light for us. Um, so hey, just kick us off to tell us a little bit about um from a high level before we unpack it and dig in, but what is it that you do to transform and be the speaking of light? How do you work with people? Well, I use hypnosis, which is a somewhat altered state of consciousness. It is not a magical, you know, experience or anything. It's just, it's really just being able to calm your body and um open your mind and amazing things happen like just having contact with our subconscious mind which also has contact with you know the universe in a way is um it's a, it's an incredibly transformative experience and state of mind that I get to guide people in and kind of um look around through the absolute wonder that is our our own subconscious mind beautiful beautiful um how did you get into this work well i started off um well always as a little girl i i thought i loved uh, performing in drama and i wanted to be a um a drama therapist because i liked the the way that storytelling could affect us so deeply and help us understand ourselves and each other. Um, And so, yeah, so that was like my, my dream as a child. And then fast forward, um, I'm married with kids. I find myself in a uh, relationship that's really in trouble of breaking up. My family, my kids are little. So uh, we went to the, to marriage counseling and they told us well you need to go to personal therapy because it's you know you're just there's just too much defensiveness whatever mm-hmm. so I got to go delve into my own patterns right with my therapist I sat down I said I don't know what's wrong and you know everything seems good on the outside it's not good we have terrible you know patterns and she said don't worry we'll figure it out so we did journaling, like instead of reacting to my sort of body's patterns, which I understand now the patterns of like my past, you know, that got set when I was really little, um, I started writing it down and listening to it and listening to the narratives that I was saying, the emotions that I was feeling, identifying those, looking at how they were tied to old belief systems and old patterns. And it was kind of like, amazing. It was a long process of a whole year where I did this every week and I journaled and I wrote down our, every interaction we had, instead of having our same old, same old, you know, unproductive conversation, I'll go and write it all down. So I learned this witness consciousness of myself that way via journaling. And then, um, it was amazing. And I, I healed and grew and my kids healed and grew. It was just a super great, Um, process. And even though I did end up getting divorced, we have a, we still to this day have a great 
relationship and parenting relationship, which couldn't have been done if I don't think if I had done that work. So I'm a real big believer in that work. And then fast forward, I was still doing more healing and I did a an altered state of consciousness, holotropic breath work workshop. And I had these um, memories come up and these experiences come up from inside of myself. And it was such a trip, Kate. Like it was like, um, I actually went, I fell to heaven. Like there was like, I met this light that was all encompassing and all comforting and compassionate. Um, and I resolved issues that I'd had from childhood with my parents, like saw, and it's typical to see like people who've passed that you love in these experiences. I had that, like, it was just so phenomenal. And I was, at that time I was considering going back to school for counseling psychology. And I was like, where did I go? What happened? So I started interviewing a bunch of psychologists and people about this. They're like, that sounds like things we do in hypnotherapy. So I got into that. I was like, okay, so that's probably what I need to do. Cause I want to bring this to people to help them to uh, observe their patterns that they are not aware of in a conscious state. Mm -hmm. But once you get into this, into this hypnotic state, you can have this sense of parasympathetic nervous system where you observe your memories in a whole like healing way instead of in a scared or, you know, re-traumatizing way. Um, and so, yeah, so that's what I've been doing. Oh. And yeah, it's amazing. That's the most, would you say that that's the most important part of your work with your clients or give me a, give me some sense of that, you know, like, what would you say is like the most important part of your, of your work? Yes. The absolutely most important part yeah. is that they, that we can sit in this observer seat of our own self. Mm -hmm. And so rather than, and be really calm, be really impartial, compassionate and rather than like be afraid of our memories or be afraid of, of our patterns, we can actually see them with wisdom. Mm. And, we, and in this way, like everything that we couldn't get when we were little, because like, I mean, the way our patterns get set is that human beings are the one animal which is reliant on their, um, you know, parentage uh for so long like we can't even feed ourselves until we're at least five right find enough food like if we're left to our own devices and then it takes another six or like uh, about 12 is when we can finally sort of make our way around the world so we need these parent figures to survive and because that's um tied to survival it's very strong to make a pattern so if your parents are and all parents are, I mean, we all make mistakes. So if your parents are at all, you know, distracted, shut down, uh, never mind addicted or going through emotional turmoil themselves, and they're not able to be there for you. And our survival relies on being bonded to that person. So we end up making patterns that will keep us bonded to that person. Like either I have to be a really good girl or I have to um, be a funny girl or I have, you know, whatever it is. And so these patterns can really stay with you. And yeah, and being able to look at those patterns impartially and with compassion. Yeah, it, it's amazing how we can transform uh, our relationships and our lives going forward you know once you've walked yourself through from the point of view of a grown-up mm -hmm. your what your child needed all the you know the, the the emotional needs um that needed to be met or um yeah just the being seen for who you are the authenticity that needed to be seen like you're able to see it now um yeah, it's, it's really a, this observer seat of, you know, this witness consciousness to your own self is, is really incredible. So who do you like to work with? Who's your ideal client? You know, it's funny because I have an ideal client 
which I'm almost reluctant to have. <laughs> like I can't, but I, I can't deny it anymore because I've been doing this now for about five years. And I really get, I work with, I love working with kids because it's just so fun because they're ready to transform. Mm -hmm. And it, I don't know, it's just something motherly about that. But I, and I love working with women because I adore women. But the thing is, is what I get the most profound impact with and the people who are just like, Catherine, you changed my life forever. And I, I can't believe it. I love you so much. Well, not that I love you, but, but it's men. It is like men. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know why. I feel like that shows me. I feel like I honestly didn't choose it. But, you know, I did grow up with two brothers who I love so much. And, you know, maybe that's why. I, I don't know. But, yeah. So can you give me um, an idea of, like, what a success story would be in your line of work? Well, so, you know, as I was alluding to about the parenting thing, I think I would say that, um, like, a couple of the most, or, like, if I was to take all of the biggest success stories that I can think of, they all revolve around um, having a difficult relationship with their mother. And whether she was just distracted or out of touch or addicted or you know, just really emotionally unwell or even gone, like mm -hmm. abandoned. Mm -hmm. There's this sense of abandonment and anger towards the mom. Mm -hmm. And a lot of bad things happen when a little child, a little boy is not connected to his mom. And so being able to see that and being ha allowing all these guys to witness themselves through that experience and then come out on the other side and say things like, I can now, because what they show up with is issues like my wife's about to divorce me. I can't, she can't stand me anymore. My reactions are too overwrought for her, or I'm smoking pot every day, or, um, you know, I'm doing porn all the time, or um, uh, it tends to be relationship issues that are, they're struggling with. Huh. Right. And so when they're done working with me, they're like, um, I can be in the same room with my family and my mother and everybody there. And I don't feel angry. I don't feel triggered. I just feel accepting and responsible for myself. My wife thinks I'm a new person. Um, I feel like a new person. I look at a flower and I almost, and I feel emotional towards it. Like, I just like, I feel like you know, the clouds are gone from my life. I'm able to experience life in presence in the now. And so when people tell me those type of things and they do, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is such good work. This is the work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. I love that. The clouds are gone. I feel like a new person. My wife thinks I'm a new person, right? Um, my partner's seeing me differently. I'm feeling differently about what used to be the trigger in my life. You know, these are all pivotal, right. pivotal, changing transformational moments in our lives. Okay. So um, for someone out there who is like, okay um hypnosis like obviously I've heard of it but I've never done it <laughs> and I'm not really sure what to expect right um yeah. what would you say but yet everyone has an issue with a parent like there's literally not a person on the planet that like can't say I've had an issue with a parent at one time or another right. Right? um and so uh, for someone out there that is self-electing to say, I can recognize myself in some of what you're saying but I'm not sure what to expect walk us through a little bit about about what working with you would like look like from a logistical standpoint, right? Like, is this, I'm assuming it's virtual as an option, but that's an assumption. So you'll please share with me what that looks like. Is it virtual? Is it in person? How long does it take? Um, you know, and do I have to do the talking? Do you do the talking? Like, tell me a little bit about what, what someone can expect. Yeah, great. Thank you for asking. So I have been doing um almost exclusively uh 
virtual for the last few years. Uh, it works really well. People feel comfortable as long as there's a space that's quiet. And then it's more about really hearing each other. Um, and I, I do have an office here in town in Bellingham, Washington, and I work through another clinic. Um, but they are actually giving up their lease. So that puts me in a place where I'm like, pretty much either get a new office or virtual. That's where I'm at right now. So, but what happens is people sign up for a consult and it's free. And then we talk um, and we decide if we want to work together. I tell them about hypnosis and ask them a little bit more about their stuff, uh, what they want to work on, where they want to go. Um, and then we set up sessions and normally people start off with one issue, like, you know, how I said, like, I see our issues, like I'm not getting along with this person. That's like a door, a door in, or I feel anxiety all the time. That's a door. I feel sad all the time. Also a door. Like I see all the presenting things to be like, okay, let's open, let's go in down, 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 down. <laughs> And um, they, I really, it's amazing, you know, what's, what's there. And so it's about once you go in those doors of perceptions of being able to uh, practice, uh, there's a self-hypnosis practice that I have my clients do. Um, I have a relaxation recording on YouTube that clients can listen to. And so they can get a, an exact, you know, uh, experience of what a hypnotic induction feels like. And then there's time in the middle and they can just like, I sometimes give them an assignment for that, but you can just sort of observe your mind, um, whatever thoughts come and go, observe them. And then there's a, uh, um, coming out of hypnosis, uh, at the end. So, yeah, so we do that kind of thing in every session. And, but during that time in the middle is a time where we do explorations of, of the mind. And I have a lot of different techniques and, um, things that we you can use for different issues. So, or, you know, different people's comfort level. Um, everybody can do it. I mean, I've had people come to me who just feel like, oh, you know, I'm really feel self-conscious or I feel like I, I don't know if this is going to work, whatever. And I was like, well, if you're willing, I'm willing. And I meet you where you are. I mean, honestly, like some people can go off on this incredible massive trip and some people can just, you know, just take it bit by bit and then kind of incorporate it, integrate that as it, as it, as they're ready. So, yeah. And wow. you do, remember, you know, you remember everything, especially if you make a point of remembering and write it down after it's kind of like a dream. It's like a, a lucid dream, um, or, you know, a, a dream in, in a waking between waking and sleeping state. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That was perfect. That gives such a really clear picture, um, and makes it seem very accessible, right. Which is really, really totally. important. Yeah. So you mentioned about your YouTube and I believe that you're for gift today. So tell us a little bit about how we can get in touch with you. I have a feeling a lot of the people in our community are going to be very, very curious about this. And, um, I have a feeling that a lot of people are really going to want to, uh, learn more and most likely book a session. So tell me how can they get in touch with you and, um, and what is the best way? Yeah. So I'm at, um, Catherine Witt hypnotherapy.com. And, um, YouTube, Catherine Witt hypnotherapy, um, and my Gmail is Kate Witt hypnotherapy at Gmail. So, and that's yeah. Kate with a C. With a C. Yes. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Um, so that's great. So, um, we always ask at the end, um, about revealing a best kept secret. Okay. So revealing a best kept secret can be, um, something that you wish you had known earlier or, um, something that you want to share with the audience as kind of like a pearl of wisdom or a golden nugget, if you will, a diamond, if you will. Um, so in revealing life's best kept secret in your life or in your career, right? or in your experiences, what's one thing that you would want to share with the audience to say, I just want to make sure that they know this. Okay. Um, I guess I would say that inside every one of our subconscious minds is the power to have 
everything we want, which is essentially to be loved, right? And to be connected and um, to feel good in our bodies, to feel free, to feel empowered. And inside of our subconscious minds, we have that. Um, we all have it. And we also have a lot of memories and it's a really interesting uh, world in our mind to kind of arrange it and reorganize in some cases the patterns to make it so that we have this power and this freedom that we and this love that we all you know really are here for beautiful that was perfect that was absolutely <laughs> perfect you. uh Catherine it was such a pleasure to have you today as our guest um I know that this has been a fascinating conversation for me and I I just know uh that our listeners are going to feel the exact same way um so thank you so so much for joining us today uh we really appreciate all of your wisdom your experience your heart um and all that you have shared with us we'll also drop your YouTube link in the show notes so that people can access that as well um, along with your website so that they know how to get in touch with you. Thank you so much for being here. Super Kate. Thank you very much for having me. And I also, I'm working on a course and I also do speaking engagements. If people are interested in, in having a workshop or joining a course or having me speak. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning that. That's amazing. And yeah. thank all of you for listening to this episode. Uh, as always, we appreciate you being here. We see you, we love you, we hear you, and we will connect with you next time when you join us uh, for our next episode. Okay. See everyone soon. I will connect with you if you're listening soon, um, all the different ways that you are accessing this podcast today. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Welcome to On Air with Kate Butler, where we are revealing life's best kept secrets.